The coastline of Maui, only 10 kilometers away, is by contrast drastically deficient in fish life. Even those reefs that contain a rich population of healthy corals often house just a few smaller species of reef fish. Is it possible that we're taking too much? Ron Youngblood is a newspaper columnist and has been passionately diving Hawaii's reefs for 35 years. Common sense says if you take all of the fish off a reef, you're not going to have any fish on the reef. Gill nets are, are invisible walls. They can cover a whole reef very easily. They should be weighted in one side with buoys on the other side so that they hang straight down. But usually what happens is they'll collapse them a little bit so that even if they're using legal sized mesh, it makes them smaller. And too often I've seen them just fold it over a reef completely, catching everything that's there. The thing about gill nets is they take everything. You can't target any specific fish. They catch a lot of juveniles, they catch baby sharks, they catch turtles. In a single night, fishermen can clear whole schools of fish from a reef. Unwanted or inedible species are simply thrown back, dead or dying. When entire schools are removed from individual reefs, nothing is left for these species to replenish their population. The Department of Land and Natural Resources, or DLNR, is currently proposing a ban on inshore gill nets. However, stiff opposition from fishermen has kept the practice alive, and fish populations continue to dwindle. Although there are a handful of laws governing the use of these nets, they're practically impossible to enforce due to the lack of environmental enforcement officers. There are only 105 positions for the entire state. These officers are expected to police some 750 miles of coastline, along with all of the state parks and forests. Gill nets ought to be banned, whether you eat fish or you don't eat fish, whether you go swimming or you don't go swimming, whether you snorkel or dive, whatever. The only way they're going to be banned is when there's enough political pressure put on the state. If we're going to have a healthy ocean, we've got to ban the gill nets. One of the best solutions to replenishing coastal reef fish populations is to increase the number of marine protected areas by setting aside more marine life conservation districts, known as MLCDs. MLCDs provide a haven for coastal marine life in which they're able to grow and reproduce. These animals eventually spread out beyond the confines of the protected areas and replenish depleted reefs further along the coastline. Scientists recommend that a minimum of 20% of all inshore waters should be reserved as conservation districts in order to maintain healthy fish populations. At present, there are only 11 marine life conservation districts in Hawaii, which amount to less than 1% of the total coastline. Hawaii's nearshore reefs represent one of the most unique coral reef ecosystems on the planet. Twenty-five percent of all fish are endemic to the islands, which means they're found nowhere else on Earth. Without proper management of these coastal resources, 
this irreplaceable haven could be reduced to a deserted wasteland. Decimation of the Hawaiian monk seal population in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands is a classic example of how poorly our fisheries are managed. Paul Achitov is the managing attorney for the Honolulu office of the environmental law firm Earth Justice. The lobster fishery in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands really began to develop in the 1980s, and by the mid 1980s, they were fishing way beyond the sustainable yield of that resource. They were taking out far more lobster than the lobster population could replace. And lobster is an important item of prey, particularly for the young monk seals. Well, as a result of the lobster fishery overfishing the lobster, the monk seal pups were starving. And they began to discover this in the 1990s. This graph clearly demonstrates how the crash of the lobster fishery and the monk seal's demise coincide. It's a crime against humanity that the Western Pacific Regional Fishery Management Council and the National Fishery Service allowed this to happen, allowed that fishery to be completely depleted and fished beyond its ability to recover. Uh, the lobster is not the only food source that was taken out as a result of the lobster fishery, but it was also the other bycatch species. There were over 200 bycatch species, including octopus and eels and squid, also that are very important to the monk seal, the survival of the monk seal. My firm sued the fishery service a few years ago and said, this has gone on long enough. This fishery is overfished and the monk seals are starving and they are violating the Endangered Species Act, they are violating the National Environmental Policy Act, and the judge agreed. So the fishery has been closed now for the last several years. Uh, but what the scientists have discovered is the population of the lobsters, having been overfished for so long, hasn't recovered. So even if they were, uh, there were no lawsuit, They've, they've fished themselves out of business. Hawaiian monk seals are the most endangered marine mammals in the United States. Largely confined to the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, there are only about 1,300 individuals alive today. What really needs to happen in terms of what people can do is we need to intervene on behalf of the monk seal. We need to speak on behalf of the seal. They don't have a voice at the table. You know, so the public has to be that voice and say, we want immediate action. We want intervention. We want feeding programs for pups. We want to see, we want to see money put towards the protection and recovery of that species. And we don't want to see any more funding going for the investigation of when they can continue to fish lobsters. Whether or not we can pull that species back from the verge of extinction, it's going to be up to the public. The monk seals are on the verge of extinction. 